welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to an all-new Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm taking a look at a thriller from 2010. That movie is Devil. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to really say about, about this movie, guys. I do know it's based on a story written by M. Night Shyamalan, so we're probably in for a really shitty story because Shyamalan doesn't know how to write. Uh... <laughs> And uh, I'm watching this on, on Netflix, for those of you who are curious, and uh, I'm looking at the summary on here. Um, I'm going to read the summary for you, because this, this just doesn't sound pleasing at all. It says, de it says, Detective Bowden must save five people trapped in an elevator, and he has to do it fast, because one of them is the devil. Woo! God, this sounds fucking stupid. But you know what, guys? I am really curious. I have had friends tell me that this is one of the stupidest horror movies or stupidest thrillers they have ever seen. I am curious as to how stupid this shit is going to actually get. And the only way I'm going to find out how stupid it is is if I shut up and I push play. And I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Devil. Well, guys, this movie's off to a rather poor start, um, because we are only up to the opening credits, and the only thing we see is panning shots of a large city, except the city is being filmed with the camera upside down. I understand it's probably supposed to look odd, and it's supposed to look, it's, and it's supposed to look disorienting. It really doesn't. It just looks kind of fucking stupid. So, this is it, huh? This right here is the entire fucking movie. It's gonna be these five unfucking likable dickheads stuck in a friggin' elevator, and one of them is the devil. Frankly, I hope I hope that whichever one of them is the is the devil rises up and kills all four of them by the end of this movie. Man, this is gonna be a long and painful ride, guys. Well, guys, you know, I was genuinely hoping for this movie to at least have some level of tension, but really, we don't. I believe we just saw our first death amongst all the people in the fucking, you know, elevator, and sadly, it's the closest thing we had to a likable person in the fucking elevator, so I have a feeling now that, that this movie's just going to go down downhill from here, and it was already starting off really low on the fucking slope. This is going to suck. Wait a minute. Wait a fucking second here. Are you telling me that every time that your toast lands jelly side down, it's because the devil is present? fucking thing I have ever heard. Holy shit. Seriously, guys, I, I really want to know when the fuck is anything interesting going to happen in this, in this movie? I have been waiting patiently for a genuinely tense moment or a moment when we should care about any of these fucking characters. Uh, and I have yet to be given that. This movie is vastly worse than I could have ever imagined. Well, I guess that it wouldn't be a Shyamalan film unless there was a mind-bogglingly retarded twist. And well, it is certainly a twist. It's not a fucking good one. In fact, it's kind of lazy and stupid, but then again, that seems to be par for the course with this fucking movie. Well, guys, that was Devil. Thank the fucking gods that piece of shit is done. No, no, no. no. I'm not even going to look at the fucking credits. I don't want to look at the fucking credits. Oh, dear God. You know, guys, I genuinely... I genuinely thought that that this okay. I knew going in this movie was gonna be kind of bad. I didn't think it was gonna be 
that bad. Jesus God. All right. <sighs> Writing. I think the one big glaring red flag I had going into this was the fact that M. Night Shyamalan had story credit. I've yet to see a film that was written by M. Night Shyamalan that was even somewhat decent. Um, partially, partially because his characters are always shallow and crap, the fact that his uh, twists that he damn near seems to insist on putting into almost all of his movies are always heavy-handed, forced, and they make almost no sense at all. That's kind of sort of what happens here with the uh, two of them that we get in the uh, closing, like, 20 minutes or so. Uh, let's see. But, yeah, guys, but all that's here. We have... We have characters who, none of them are likable, none of them have any depth, none of them give you a reason to fucking care. Now, part of that is because you find out as the film go, goes on that all five people who are trapped in the elevator are all sinners in some way, shape, or form, like one of them is a con man, one of them is, one of them is a thief, one of them is this, one of them is that, you know, one of them, it, it, it just, it just keeps on going, and one, and one of, and one of their grievous sins is... One of the big twists, so you seriously should have should have seen payoff on it the moment the moment it was hinted at early in the film, um, and of course the twist as to which one of those five is the killer, also comes out of nowhere because uh, I'm just going to give you a small a small spoiler. It winds up being one of the victims. It winds up being one of the victims. One of the people who we see die winds up winds up being the devil. It's like. And even that was hinted at about killing people as a decoy and then actually going through with your with your with your job. They actually kind of referenced another crime that did that because they thought that the killer was one person, wound up not being that person. Instead, it wound up being one of the other people who uh, died because that was because that was their because that was their decoy in order to kill more people and raise even more suspicion amongst the remaining sur sur like survivors. Guys, there is no tension here because literally everything is hinted at and foreshadowed and damn near blatantly announced before it happens. There is nothing here which which is which is going to shock or surprise because M. Night Shyamalan doesn't know how to write that. Instead, he has to come right out and tell you everything which, which is going to happen before it happens. And if you don't see these these things coming, then bravo, you probably you probably are also over overjoyed at the sight of key He's jingling. Oh, good God. And guys, the writing is just that bad. The story, the, the fucking story goes nowhere because it's just watching five people in a fucking elevator get friggin, get friggin systematically killed off by the devil. And then we have a cop who's trying to figure out which, you know, one of them is the killer who finds out that they all have a criminal past in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and it just keeps building, and it doesn't build well. The movie is dull, the movie is boring, oh, and uh, there's one character I wish had never been in the goddamn movie, however, it's his presence that kind of turns this into a movie about the devil killing people in the fucking elevator, and it is one of, it, it is one of these security guards who is a very, very re, re, religious person who, uh, tries to who who tries to explain that it is the devil by taking a piece of toast that just sort of randomly appeared out of nowhere, tossing it up it tossing it up in the air and watching as it lands jelly side down is proof that the devil is present because because bad things only happen when the devil is there, which means guys that if I take this fucking quarter here and I flip it and it winds up coming up and it winds up coming up tails that means that. The devil is here. If, if I were to take a 20-sided die and roll it, and if it comes up odd, the devil is here. Why? Because I say, because I say that odd numbers are the numbers, are the numbers of the, uh, of the devil, just for the sake of this fucking example. It is the stupidest logic you could possibly have. Oh, and, uh, yeah, and, and it just keeps on going. And, of course, the staunchly fucking re-fucking... And the fucking, like, religious lunatic winds up being the guy who's right. It's like, oh, my God. I had no joy watching this. And uh, the fact, guys, that Netflix has a timer on all these videos, 
I was counting down the seconds, waiting for something interesting to happen that never fucking came. I was waiting for a twist that was going that was going to be interesting, and that never happened. The writing here is probably some of the worst Shyamalan has ever shat forth in a film. The sickest part about this, guys, is that this is supposed to be part of a trilogy, because apparently M. Night Shyamalan wants to make a series of horror films, and he's just gonna sort of lump, like, three of them together as a fucking trilogy, with the only connection being that Shyamalan is the one who's penning the stories. So, yeah... He still hasn't put out the other, you know, two. No, I am not going to waste my time with the other two. Devil was plenty for me. So, the writing, the writing was abysmally terrible. What about the acting? Well, guys, when you, when, when you are handed a script that essentially, that essentially is just a turd spread out probably across a good 170 pages, um... You cannot expect the actors to turn in anything ha halfway decent. And you can almost tell in the eyes of every actor that they fucking knew they, they were working on garbage, so none of them tried. There is very little effort put into anything here. Uh, oh, one last thing involving the writing. When the when the devil shows up, the final the final sur the final survivor in the in the elevator is asking if there's any way to make a bargain with the devil. And Shyamalan sort of plays it up as if the devil has never done a bargain in his, in his, in his life. I'm sorry. I honestly think I would have been much happier if Shyamalan would have, would have just done like a Faustian thing at the last fucking second. Instead of saying that the devil doesn't make bargains. It's fucking stupid. I'm sorry, I just had to get that out there. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, back on now back on to acting. Nobody here, nobody here tried, and you can see in the eyes of every actor that they did not that they did not want to be there. They were there solely to cash a fucking check. And I certainly hope that every cent was, you know, worth it. This thing this thing was torturous to watch. I cannot imagine what the fuck it would have been like to work on it. Um camera work. Camera work here is okay, and the sound here is okay, the lighting is okay. I have a problem, though, with the picture quality. Um, mind you guys, I watched this on Netflix, so that means that if you wanted high-quality video, you go to a site like Netflix or Hulu or something to watch your movie, or you, or you fucking buy it on Blu-ray or DVD, you know, you find, you find a proper official source. But everything here, guys... The blacks in here, like the black color, it seems way, way too, too fucking dark. Everything, and, and, and guys, what I mean is that when something is black, and with, and with a movie which has a whole lot of dark colors in it, the blacks almost seem to stand out in this really nasty, ugly way. The picture quality is incredibly fuzzy and pixely. It really does happen to look, it really does look as... Fucking if I just bit torrented the the movie and watched it, but I didn't. This guys is the picture quality on Netflix, which means that the studio that made this thing couldn't even be asked to give a decent you know quality copy to Netflix, or there is no decent quality copy. And this pixely garbage is the closest thing we are ever going to get. It's fucking disgusting, especially for a movie that was made in 2010, you would think that maybe, you know, they'd have a better quality picture, or maybe it was better quality cameras or film, something. Something here got royally fucked up, and it led to terrible picture quality any time that there are dark colors present. And with a movie that is supposed to be a horror film, and it is supposed, and almost everything is dark colors, it looks terrible. Uh, <laughs> that was just hideous. Music. There's very, very little, you know, music. Um, the one piece of music that is going to haunt me is the really shitty music that played, that plays in the fucking elevator for the first, like, 45 minutes of, no, wait, more, no, actually, it's more like the first, like, half hour of the film. At which point, then, they finally opt to kill the fucking, the fucking music in the, in the elevator and just let it play almost in sullen silence. Um... 
except except naturally for this except naturally for this musical sting any 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 time that a new body was found inside of the elevator um <laughs> Honestly, guys, I cannot think of a single positive this movie has outside of the lighting, what very little lighting is in this dark thing, is done fairly well. So, guys, when all is said and done, can I recommend Devil? No. I, I, I can't. The only way I could possibly recommend it is if you happen to like the, the trash that M. Night fucking Shyamalan turn, like, freaking, like, turns out and tries to pass off as a movie, then hey, you will, then you will probably adore this thing. Because it has all of the friggin' hallmarks of his shitty films. However, if you have taste, if you if you actually like your movies to have some level of substance, and if you want your horror movies to actually be somewhat thrilling or to have some level of fucking su suspense, then this is not the movie for you. This movie is shit from top to bottom. And the worst part about all of this, guys, the one thing that is going to haunt me now is the fact that Devil is now in my Netflix viewing history, which means now I am probably going to get recommendations because I was stupid enough to watch this shit piece on Netflix. Yippee. Anyway, guys, um... You know what? Since I have net, since I have Netflix open, I'm gonna go watch some more fucking Doctor Who. I'm gonna go watch something good. So yeah, guys. With that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.